Welcome everyone, we're going to do a classic ACDC song, Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be. It's always been one of my favorites and um, I usually kind of shy away from doing ACDC songs because there are so many experts out there, but you know what, the hell with them. Um, this is how I play it, this is, uh, if you like how I teach, here we go. Alright, I've the, the key to this song is it's in E flat but slightly sharp from that if you're playing along with the studio recording. Um, so tune to E flat and then go slightly, maybe a tenth sharper. I'm in tune with the record, so I'll give you an A and you can go off of that. <laughs> Okay, so that's the catch of the song. It's just slightly sharp of E flat tuning. All right, so I've written it out. My notes will be available below. We'll go over this. Okay, the song starts out with a power chord G. So on the first and second, put your uh, small finger and ring finger. Place your middle finger up on the G note on the sixth string and mute the fifth. Then we go to the, I call it the ACDC chord. It's an F sharp over D. Now I notice Malcolm plays this, he uses his thumb. I can't quite get my thumb over it. I don't know, it's something with the joint, whatever. It just doesn't work for me. So what I do is switch my middle finger down onto the third string, second fret, and bring my first finger up to the F sharp and play through the second string. Alright, so we have this. And then an A. Alright, so that G to F sharp over D will be three times until we finally stop on an A. measure, that full measure there to the A four times in the intro. Then we're into the verse. Now I'll talk about both guitars, what they're doing here, Malcolm and Angus and how they play this. So Angus part has a little string dampener between each one, so a muted fifth string. So we're going to be on the fourth string for this. We'll go five to four. All right, we're going to do that twice and then 5-4 real quick, so it'll sound like this. So there's no mute or muted string between that last 5-4. And then we move to the fifth position and we're going to hammer into 7 as we hit it and then hit that seven three more times. Stop, and then do it again. Then back to our fives and fours. Alright, you'll hear the bass thumping all through this. And if you want to hit some... but it helps with the timing and it's kind of fun to do that way all right so with that said there are let's see one two three four in the pre-course measure of those and then we get into the verse and we'll do eight of them all right once we get to the eighth one in the verse all he does is hold down the seven all right, so it'll sound like this. Let me take it from the four and five. So we let that five ring with the, uh, the fifth string ring open with the fourth string at the seventh fret. Do that twice, and now we're into the chorus. All right, before I get to the chorus, let's cover what Malcolm's doing. All right. So for this, what Malcolm is doing is hitting these notes basically open 
fifth string. Let me tune down because he doesn't play that distorted. So just turn my guitar volume down and we got. And then he hits an A four times. Four more and then we're back. So again, when he gets to the end, the eighth measure of the verse, the A is held. So that's the difference between the two. If you've got two guitars, you can um, mix it up if you like. All right, we'll cover the chorus next, which they both play the same way. First half measure of the chorus, we're going to do D to G. The second D to G back to D is a little different. You'll see the difference here as I play it. So when we hit the second time through, we're going to hit that G down, up, down, up. Then we move on from there. So we got our D power chord to G, back to D, back to G with a down, up, down, up back to D. So we'll go through that one more time. All right. Then we move to an E power chord. You can actually play, I hear that G note, so if you want to play through the third string, that's fine. Then to A, back to E, and then end on G. power chord all right so we have um let's just go through the whole thing oh, one two three four First chorus, we're going to repeat that pre verse and then a verse and then another chorus, and then we're going to go into the solo. I'll show you the solo rhythm before we go over the solo, and then we'll go into the chorus that comes after the solo and the chorus that they kind of extend basically with the verse and out. So the solo rhythm will be Malcolm, and he basically does the same rhythm he does for the verse. We'll do four measures, or, or two measures, each with A twice, only the last measure, the last A's are held. So we've gone through one measure, we'll go through one more measure so you can see what I mean when it's held. <laughs> that's taking us out of the song. All right. So the chorus taking us out is exactly what we've learned. And then he keeps singing the chorus over the verse. All right. So that I call it the chorus extended. It's just the So he ends with that chorus out as I'm calling it. It's gonna be one measure two times through. Alright. One that's a half measure and then again through it and then we're going to go into the second measure. The second measure will do it once, so we're through the second half measure. And then we're into the last half of the second measure. And it'll sound like this. So 
basically we're hitting the sev five to seven. So basically we're hitting the five to seven four times. We'll do it, um, you know, once through the measure and then just hitting it again for a second time through the five seven and just hold it and end that in A. So that's really the outro extended chorus after the chorus, after the solo rhythm. <laughs> so really, again, if you follow my notes, it's not too difficult, but it's damn fun to play. God, their music is just so enjoyable. We'll go over the solo, which is fun to play in itself. Again, not very difficult. Um, and that's cool because it makes it fun. It fits the song very well. Um, melodic in certain spots. Melodic in certain spots. So you'll be able to follow it. I'm going to take the first half measure of the solo. Let's start like this. <laughs> So basically what we're doing is going to be hitting the 4th string 7th fret, give that some vibrato, maybe a little pick harmonics, just, just kind of close down on your pick a little bit, hit that with some vibrato 7, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 4, 8, 10 times. <laughs> Scrape up. Okay, and then you're going to go to the fifth fret of the third and second string back to the fourth string at seven. There's a little vibrato there, he leaves a little bit of room. Right, now we're going to do this. It's the second half measure. So what we're doing there, after we've held that 7, just a slight vibrato. We're going to hit 7 bent up as we strike it, and then 7 unbent. We'll do that a total of 3 times. One more time, but then we're going to take off from there. So we're going to hit 7, bend that up on the third string catching the fifth fret of the first string and then the second string eight pulled off to five third string seven pulled off to five landing on the fourth string just lay your finger down catch seven to five on the third string ending on the seven on the fourth string so, from that second half measure, one, two, three, four. Alright, from right there, you're going to go quickly to an eight. We're going to do this. Alright, I'm just going to leave it there because the next part you'll really recognize. So we're hitting eight, bending it up, striking it four more times, and then the fifth time releasing it. Alright, the next part of it will go like this. I'll just stop there. We're going to slide into the eleventh fret on the third string, and then hit the tenth fret of the second string twice. We'll do the slide in this tens three times. The fourth time is just, it's not slid, the timing's just slightly different. He goes right to it and then two tens. So watch what I do. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the third time through is different. Alright, so let's end out this part. We'll go with this. So the last part of the measure will sound like this. Alright, there's a little finesse to this, especially if you're playing with this in the recorded version. And I'll speak to that. It's the second half of this. So the first half is pretty straightforward. We're going to grab the second string at the 12th fret 
all right? And we're gonna give it a bend, and then we're gonna bend it up again with a strike, release, pull off to 10. Then he comes up to the 13th fret, gives that a bend on the second string, then goes to 12 with a bend, and then a pull off to 10. There's no release. It's a real subtle blues move that you'll notice. So let me take it from the 11 to 10s. Alright, so again, that's a little nuance to the song, but I really, I love that feel and put that in your pocket for when you're playing blues. It'll sound better than Okay, so there you go. Now we're on to the third measure. I'll play through the half measure so you can see what it'll sound like. Alright, so what we're doing is we're going to be on that second string bending 15 twice. Then a 15 bend and release to 13. Then we come back to 15, bend that up, catch 15 on the first string. We'll do that twice, but we're gonna hold that first string the second time. So it's almost like we're hitting them together the second time with 15 on the second, twice more. Another 15 bent up, catching 15 unbent on the first string. And then we release the 15 bend. Alright, so all together slowly. One, two, three, four. So that's the first half of the solo. Then we just move up to 20, all right? Second string, 20. We're gonna bend it a total of two times. One more time for a third time with a release. Then a bend, and then non-bend. And then bent and slid down. All right, so we have this. One, two, three, four. So that should show you how. Okay, for the last half of the measure, we're going to come up to 20. We're going to hit that three times. The third time, each time will be bent. The third time will be released. We're going to bend it again and then hit it unbent. And then bend it one more time and slide down. Alright, so we have this slowly. One, two, three, four. That's the end of the solo. So I really hope that helps everybody. It was just so much fun. Look forward to more ACDC because I'm, I'm just, uh, it's a shame I, I let it go. So enjoy.